biochemistry. Today we're going to be talking about the Morse potential. Now, the Morse potential really builds off of the harmonic oscillator. So if you're not familiar with the harmonic oscillator, go ahead and check out my video on that and then come back here. I'll link to that in the show description. So the Morse potential, what's that? Well, the Morse potential is a way to describe the interaction between two atoms and a diatomic molecule. Specifically, we're thinking about the vibration of these two atoms with respect to each other. So in the harmonic oscillator, we thought about that potential as totally symmetric. So it's just as hard to pull atoms apart as it is to push them together. That turns out to not, strictly speaking, be true for real molecules. You can see, just like with my fists, as they come closer and closer, eventually they run into each other. And that makes it harder to push them together than it does to pull them apart. And the same is true for atoms. And so the Morse potential takes into account this, this uh, different potential to give us a more accurate prediction for the vibrations of our molecules. So let's take a look at those two potentials. In the green here, you see the harmonic oscillator potential. And you can see it's totally symmetric. It's the same as I go to the left as it is when I go to the right. In the blue, you see the Morse potential. And there you can tell that as I go off to the right, that is pulling the atoms farther apart, it has a gentler slope. On the other hand, as I get the atoms closer together, it has a steeper slope. And this is reflecting this difference between compressing the atoms together and pulling them apart. It's easier to pull atoms apart than it is to squeeze them together. And our Morse potential takes account of that. So you can see that for the lower energy states, for here, for example, if I go down to the zeroth state, the green and blue line match up pretty closely. Those are pretty much the same. So at low energies, the Morse potential and the harmonic oscillator potential, pretty much identical. The first state, they're shifted a little more. The second state, they're shifted even more. The third state, you can see that's the third state for the Morse potential, and that's the third state for the harmonic oscillator. So they start to get pretty different. So when you're thinking about higher vibrational states in particular, the Morse potential is really important to take account of. You need to use that more realistic potential to be able to predict the way atoms are going to behave. Let's take a closer look at the Morse potential and what that predicts mathematically about these energy spatials. Well, we can calculate the spacings between our different energy levels with this equation right here. And what it tells us is if we want any of our states, we just plug in a number for n. So the zeroth state, I'd plug in zero. That's called the zero point energy, by the way. And that would allow me to calculate the energy of the zeroth state. The only variable we've added to this energy for the Morse potential is this dE here. That's the dissociation energy. And that's basically how deep is your well. And so, you can see here on this graph, DE is represented from the top of the well all the way down to the bottom of the well. That is where this Morse potential flattens out down to the bottom, the uh, trough of that potential. And you can think about the dissociation energy as being the amount of energy it would take to take something from the very bottom of the trough and to the very top. And what that corresponds to physically is you'd be separating your two atoms or dissociating them. So if I want to calculate the energy of the different states, all I have to do is pick out which state I want and plug it into this equation. The last thing I need, well, there's two other things I need. One is the Planck's constant, which we always have and is always the same for all molecules. And the other is this new, this frequency. That's called the fundamental vibration frequency. That's basically the frequency of the oscillation of our molecule. That's not the light that could be interacting with it. That's the oscillation of our molecule in its lowest state. So that's the fundamental vibration frequency. And if we have that, and we know which n we want to calculate it for, and we have the depth of our well, we can calculate the energy of all these different states. Now, a few more things about this dissociation potential. It turns out, right, if you want to pull a molecule apart, if you had to pull it apart from being totally still, it would take the energy exactly equal to the dissociation energy, d sub e. But remember that the zero point energy, the lowest possible energy our molecule can be in, is this zeroth state right here. And that has some amount of energy. So that means if we want to dissociate our molecule, we don't actually have to add the full DE. Instead, we have to take it from that zero state up to the dissociation level. So DO is called the bond energy. And that's basically how hard it is to split apart the molecule. And the reason that's different than the dissociation energy is because our molecule can never be at zero energy. Our molecule is always at this zero state. And so that's where we start when we're thinking about adding energy to it to try to split it apart. How can we calculate the bond energy? Well, the bond energy is just equal to the dissociation energy minus the zero point energy or the energy of that ground state. So you take the dissociation energy and you subtract from it the energy of your first state, the n equals zero state, 
and you get out your bond energy. That's how much energy you'd have to put in to pull those two atoms apart. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at a problem you might see for the Morse potential. This question says, HCl can be described by a Morse potential with a depth of 7.41 times 10 to the minus 19th joules. That's describing that DE parameter we spoke of. It has a fundamental vibration frequency of 8.97 times 10 to the 13th per second. That means it's vibrating really fast in its lowest state. And then it asks, what's the zero point energy for HCl? Well, remember, the zero point energy is when n is equal to zero. It's the lowest possible energy it can be in. So what that last sentence is effectively telling us is it wants to know about n equals zero. So how do we get the n equals zero state? Well, all we have to do is plug in zero into our energy equation down below. So we have E of n, and now we're just going to plug in E of zero. And what that gives us is H times nu. And here we'd be plugging into our n in this equation. And our n we know is zero. So we get zero plus one half. And then we're going to subtract this other term from it. And that is H times the frequency squared over four times DE, the depth of our well. Minus zero, because that's where we're plugging in n once again, down in our equation. Remember, there's a second n here, and we plug in zero for that, plus one half, and this second term here is squared. So that's all we have to do to calculate that, and we'll go ahead and fill in those variables. What that's going to give us is uh, h nu over 2, since it's one half times h nu. And then what we're going to get is minus h nu squared still, over 4. DE. When we take our 0 plus 1 half, we get 1 half. When we square 1 half, we get 1 fourth. So we can simplify this once more before we go ahead and plug in numbers. So we get HN over, H nu over 2 minus H nu all squared. And when we do this 4 times 4 on the bottom, we're going to get 16 DE. All right, so that's the energy of our ground state. And all we have to do now is plug in the correct variables and calculate it. So H is 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34 times our fundamental frequency of vibration, which it tells us is 8.97 times 10 to the 13th. 8.97 times 10 to the 13th. And that's all going to be divided by 2. And then we're going to subtract from that the second term. And once again, we just repeat what we have up top, 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34 for Planck's constant times 8.97 times 10 to the 13th for our frequency, and that's all squared. And we divide that by 16 times the depth of our well, which we know is 7.41 times 10 to the minus 19th. All right. So that's it for calculating the zero point energy. All we have to do is plug that into our calculator and be a little careful. You probably want to check this and make sure that you're getting the right thing out of your calculator. You should get out that the zero point energy is 2.94 times 10 to the minus 20 joules. So that's the zero point energy of HCl when we mod model it with the Morse potential. One thing to keep in mind is when you look at this equation, this first part of the equation, that's actually just the harmonic oscillator. That's exactly the energy of the harmonic oscillator. So all the Morse potential do is, add, is adding the second term, which corrects our energy a bit. And if you look carefully at what the first and second term are in this case, you'll notice that the second term's pretty small and doesn't change it very much. And so the zero point energy of our molecules is not altered very much by using the Morse potential. However, when we start calculating higher order terms that is plugging bigger numbers for n, you'll see that they vary quite a lot. So let's do this last problem. It says, what is the bond energy for HCl? And then it says, remember that the dissociation energy D sub E is 7.41 times 10 to the minus 19th. Remember, the only difference between our bond energy and our dissociation energy is how much energy our molecule has in the ground state, in the current state it's in. So if you want to pull that apart, you only have to pull it from the ground state, not from the very bottom of that well. And that's what requires you to do a little bit of a calculation here. All you have to do if you want your bond energy d sub o, is take your dissociation energy and subtract your zero point energy. So we want the bond energy, d o, and that's just going to be equal to d e minus our zero point energy. Now, where do we get our zero point energy? Well, we get our zero point energy from this equation and plugging in zero. 
We just did that conveniently. So normally, what you'd have to do in this problem is now calculate your zero point energy, just like we did on the previous problem to be able to solve this problem. Since we just calculated the zero point energy, all we must do is plug in 7.41 times 10 to the negative 19, that's the depth of our well, minus the zero point energy, which we calculated on the last slide, to be 2.94 times 10 to the minus 20th joules. So those both have to be in joules, or the same units of energy. And we're going to get that our bond energy is 7.12 times 10 to the minus 19th joules. You can see that DO is just slightly different than DE. Our bond energy is just a little bit lower because our molecule in the ground state has a little energy. So when you want to rip it apart, it's already got some energy there to help you do that. So that's how you calculate the bond energy. So thanks for watching this episode of Real Chemistry where we talked about the Morse potential. That is basically the non-symmetrical potential to describe the vibrations in a diatomic molecule. If you have any questions about this lesson, please ask them below. You can also subscribe to receive updates uh, whenever I post a video and to get a nice list of the videos on your uh, YouTube homepage. Thanks for watching.